Hello everyone, welcome to Courts Today by Live Law, your one-step destination for the latest and fastest legal updates. I am your host Urvashi Chauhan, bringing you day-to-day -day happenings, landmark judgments, crucial rulings and expert insights into the world of law. The Ministry of Finance has issued a notification clarifying that there is no restriction on the members of the queer community to open a joint bank account and also nominate their queer partner as a nominee to receive money in case of death of the account holder. The notification issued by the Department of Finance Services stated that Reserve Bank of India has also issued a similar clarification. The clarification comes in accordance with the judgment of a Supreme Court in Supriyo versus Union of India, where the court last year held that there is no fundamental and unqualified right to marry. Therefore, non-heterosexual couples cannot claim the right to marry as a fundamental right or as a statutory right under the Special Marriage Act. A five-judge bench led by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachud had stated that union government should form a high-powered committee to address the socio-economic and other rights and needs of the queer community. The CGI had specifically addressed the issue of joint bank accounts, stating that the committee should consider enabling partners in a queer relationship to be treated as part of the same family for the purpose of a ration card, to have the facility of a joint bank account with the option to name the partner as a nominee in case of death. A batch of petitions were filed before the Supreme Court in 2022 relating to demolition drive scheduled for April 2022 in Delhi's Jahangirpuri. The drive was ultimately stayed, but the petitioners prayed for a declaration that authorities cannot resort to bulldozer actions as a form of punishment. One of these petitions was by former Rajya Sabha MP and CPIM leader Brinda Karat, challenging the demolitions done by the former North Delhi Municipal Corporation in Jahangirpuri area after the communal violence during the Shobha Yatra processions in April that year. When the matter was heard in September 2023, senior advocate Dushyant Dave, appearing for some of the petitioners, had voiced concerns about the rising trend of state governments demolishing the homes of people accused of crimes, empathetically stressing that the right to a home was a facet of the right to life under Article 21. Now, two new applications seeking urgent relief against bulldozer action by authorities in the states of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan have been filed before the Supreme Court. Senior Advocate C.U. Singh mentioned one of the applications today before a bench of Justices B.R. Gawai and K.V. Vishwanathan. The other application was mentioned by advocate on record Fazia Shakil regarding a house of a person that in Udaipur was demolished because his tenant's son was accused in a criminal case. They requested that these be taken up on the next date of hearing in Brinda Karat's petition. The bench agreed that the matter would be taken up on 2nd September. Stay tuned. The state of Kerala today requested the bench led by CJDY Chandrachur to consider formation of a larger bench to examine the reference in its suit filed against the union government over financial borrowing limits. This dispute began in December when the state of Kerala took the issue to the Supreme Court, accusing the central government of overstepping into its financial matters. The state of Kerala argued that certain directives and amendments from Ministry of Finance were hindering its ability to meet budget commitments, putting important welfare schemes and development projects at risk. Senior advocate Kapil Sibal, appearing for the state of Kerala today, mentioned the matter. Taking note of the same, the bench agreed to list it soon. In another update, the Supreme Court today heard a challenge to FIRs filed against YouTuber Savukku Shankar over an online interview. The court also heard the habeas corpus petition filed by his mother Kamala challenging his detention under the Tamil Nadu Gundas Act of 1982. Shankar, an independent journalist and YouTuber, was arrested in May this year for allegedly making defamatory remarks against female police personnel during an interview. Following this, a total of 16 FIRs were filed against him in different cities of Tamil Nadu, all stemming from the same interview. His counsel advocate Balaji Srinivasan today argued that Shankar was re-detained under preventive detention soon after the Madras High Court cancelled his previous detention. 
Although Shankar was granted bail and expected to be released on 12th August, he was re-detained the same day in connection with an NDPS Act. He submitted that the highest number of detainees are from the state of Tamil Nadu, signaling an increased misuse of the powers under the Tamil Nadu Gundas Act. He said that in entire India, 51% of the preventive detention orders have come from Tamil Nadu every year. When the bench asked as to why the High Court can't be approached for relief, the council submitted that the pendency of the High Court is so much that it would take at least five to six months for the matter to get decided. Senior advocate Mukul Rohtagi, appearing for the state of Tamil Nadu, sought some time to examine whether all the 15 FIRs arise out of a single interview. The court, while allowing Rohtagi time till Monday, also noted that the challenge to preventive detention order will be considered prima facie. The top court has today directed that no coercive steps be taken against the ABP news journalist who interviewed gangster Lawrence Bishnoi in Punjab and Rajasthan jails. Last year, Lawrence Bishnoi, a notorious gangster, gave an interview from jail which wrongly justified targeted killings and criminal activities. It garnered 12 million views on YouTube. It sparkled widespread attention and controversy, raising concerns about how such an interview was permitted and conducted from within the prison. The High Court, while hearing a Suomoto matter against the use of mobile phones in Punjab's prisons, had constituted a three-member SIT to investigate Bishnoi's interview in order to determine the involvement of officials. Today, a bench led by CGI D.Y. Chandrachud along with Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra was hearing a challenge against the Punjab and Haryana High Court's order which directed the SI to file an FIR related to the interview so that an investigation could proceed according to CRPC. Senior Advocate Mukul Rohtagi, appearing for the petitioners, argued that the interview helped expose the rot. He contended that the journalist carried out a sting operation as part of investigative journalism to show how Bishnoi was in touch with gangster Goldie Barar in Canada and was conspiring an attack against Salman Khan in view of the Black Bug case. The CGI, while issuing notice in the rich petition filed by ABP News Network and journalist Jagvinder Patial, and also while granting him protection from coercive action, verbally remarked, that while the intention of the journalist was to expose the criminals, conducting an interview within the premises of jail poses a serious breach of jail regulations. If you remember Amazon Prime Video's web series Tandav, a nine-episode long political thriller released in January 2021, quoted controversy for allegedly hurting religious sentiments. After the release of the multi starer series, multiple FIRs were lodged across the country against its director, producer, writer, actors, as well as Amazon India's original head under various sections of the IPC and the IT Act. They had approached the Supreme Court later, praying for the quashing of the proceedings and clubbing and transfer of all the complaints to a single police station. The additional Solicitor General S.V. Raju today informed the court that the case concerning FIR in Delhi had become irrelevant as it has been transferred to Lucknow and no further investigation was taking place. Similar updates were given for the state of Maharashtra where the case was transferred to Uttar Pradesh. Advocate Ruchira Goel, appearing for the state of Uttar Pradesh, informed that all cases had been closed as the police filed closure reports. State of Madhya Pradesh's council requested for more time as their investigation was ongoing. Senior advocate Siddharth Luthra appearing for the petitioners noted that the matter now only involved the states of Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh. He requested to include the states of Karnataka and Himachal Pradesh in the proceedings which the bench of Justices B.R. Gavai and K.V. Vishwanathan allowed. And lastly, the top court has today directed former Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir, Omar Abdullah, and his estranged wife, Payal Abdullah, to go for mediation at the Supreme Court Mediation Center. Omar Abdullah and his wife got married on September 1994. They have two sons and have been living separately since 2009. Omar had filed a divorce petition arguing that his marriage with Payal had irretrievably broken down. However, the family court back in 2016 dismissed his plea because he could not prove that the marriage had suffered an irretrievable breakdown. He challenged this before the Delhi High Court, but the family court's order was upheld there. 
Today, the Supreme Court Bench of Justices Sudanshu Dholia and Ehsanu Bin Amanullah has directed that the parties may jointly appear for mediation at the Supreme Court Mediation Center to bring a settlement between them. If you wish to know more details about the cases that I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.